I've been doing an eye drawing every year since 2009. This ritual means a lot to me, but it hasn't always been fun. But let me go back to the beginning. Also, a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, but more about them later. In high school for my final matric art exam, I decided to draw a wall of eyes looking back at the viewer. Like any kid at the time who had a problem with procrastination, I left this project for the very last week, frantically drawing all these eyes. I got better at them as the week went by, noticing a visible difference from Monday to Sunday in the progress of the eye drawings. I then showed my work at the final exam and it went really well. Myself and my two closest friends, Sean and Craig, got distinctions for our practical project and it felt amazing. But what I didn't expect was that people asked me if they could buy these drawings and within a few days I'd sold them all and that's when the penny dropped that I could actually do this for a living. I don't know if it was conscious but after a year or two I noticed that I'd felt compelled to check in with that project and add to it, almost paying homage to it each year. It became a benchmark for me to see how I was developing from the last time I did an eye drawing. More than that it was a familiar space, I knew that I could do this. If I was feeling like I needed something familiar away from the noise of trying to produce original art, I always had my eye drawings. The ritual had started and it became important to me to uphold it. Technically, the drawings were still challenging because it was a space in which I was trying to push myself to see how much detail I could squeeze in. But more than that, I was trying to push myself to keep it stimulating conceptually, which is really hard. There's this concept of tying our one hand behind our back when doing a task that we're familiar with in an attempt to try and create a barrier to make it more challenging and hopefully progress. And I felt like these eye drawings from a conceptual standpoint was a practice of that. I knew that technically it was fulfilling, but it was difficult to try and draw them in a way that felt like it satisfied me conceptually. I also reached a point where there were no shortcuts in drawing the level of detail that I'd grown to expect from these drawings made them painfully tedious. I'd get so bored and it became a tribute to perseverance. Thinking of people, this took me over a year on and off, drawing for about two months at a time before I was utterly exhausted. Each two month section that I'd put in gave me no sense of achievement and nothing to show for the last couple months of work, which is incredibly disenchanting. From a technical perspective, I'd push myself into a corner, not accepting anything less than a tedious rendering with no quick fixes. Furthermore, conceptually, it was so incredibly difficult to keep it fresh and interesting. But eventually, I came to the realization that the more pressure I put on myself to create something conceptually rich just for the sake of it being conceptual was a trap. It forced me to relax and to find the joy again. It helped me to rediscover playfulness, and within that, subconsciously, concepts tend to follow. These drawings taught me a lot, with the end goal so often far out of sight. I learned to trust that with small, incremental progress, eventually I'd start to see the end. This understanding has helped me in other parts of life as well, particularly with dealing with depression. I also came back to the meditation and catharsis of the practice. There are so many things going on at the moment that these drawings became like a, a golden anchor, allowing me to just focus on my drawing, knowing that with small incremental baby steps, I could weather whatever storm I was experiencing. It reminds me that success isn't external. By practicing something slow and mundane, you can find fulfillment in the small incremental progress each day. I love this ritual and I love these drawings and they teach me something every year. Before I end this video, I just want to give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. I've been working with them for a couple of years now, and they've played a crucial role in my career, not only in sponsoring these videos and helping me maintain this channel, but when I was just starting out, I needed to find a way to, to showcase my work. And I didn't have the knowledge or the time to learn HTML and to code a website. So I was looking for a easy method to put my work online and when I discovered Squarespace they kind of solved all of those problems. It was a very easy platform for me to register a domain, to set up an online store and most importantly to design a portfolio and show my work the way that I wanted to. Also every time I got stuck their amazing support team helped me out instantly. So if you're an artist or a creative and you're looking to put your work online give Squarespace a try and if you decide that you love them use this offer code and get 10% off your first purchase.
I hope you enjoyed the backstory behind this little ritual that I've had going on for the last couple of years and everything that it's taught me. Let me know in the comments if you use mindfulness or any tools and tricks that you've used to get yourself through a particularly labor intensive artwork. I think we can all learn in that space. If you found this interesting or, or helpful or entertaining, leave a like. It helps the channel out in a huge way. As always, thanks for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.